There was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. And uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. Wendy Williams and Diddy's highly publicized feud stands out as one of the most infamous in the entertainment industry's history. The clash involved both celebrities hurling accusations and airing their grievances in the public eye. Despite the intense exchange, it's widely acknowledged that Diddy, with his influential status, holds more sway and capability to influence situations. Recently, Wendy Williams has been sharing insights into how she navigated the aftermath of exposing Diddy, shedding light on the support that came to her rescue. According to a family friend who spoke during a recent radio interview, Wendy Williams made a relocation to Florida in 2023. Radio host Miss Jones shared that she attempted a wellness check on Williams, only to be informed by employees at Williams' previous residence that her inquiry was several months too late. Did they sell the unit? Is it on the market? Jonesy says of her initial reaction to the shocking revelation. Going on to add, they said, well, you know what happened. She was getting better, she was coming around, and then she started getting sick again because her family's in Florida and people were coming in her circle that they weren't familiar with, like they couldn't get access to her when they wanted. They moved her down to Florida. The reported move coincided with revelations about Williams' health and there were concerns within her family that her team was exploiting her. Williams' son alleged that decisions were being made on behalf of the media veteran by her team and they had gone to the extent of freezing her out of her bank accounts. You know, the legends, KRS-One, you know, you put me in there and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, Wendy's a talk show lady. Uh, no. Wendy Williams has maintained a low profile in the media since the conclusion of her syndicated talk show in 2022. However, reports surfaced last April suggesting that Williams had been involved in filming at her childhood home for a new reality series. The TV personality spent her formative years in Ashbury Park, New Jersey, but after racial unrest in 1970, her family relocated to the predominantly white suburb of Wayside. Williams has been notably transparent about her early life and subsequent challenges. Many of her books, including including the 2003 autobiography, delve into her struggles with addiction. This reported reality series could potentially mark the most intimate and personal project in Wendy Williams' illustrious career. As reported by The Sun, Wendy Williams has been on a nationwide journey to film content for a new reality show. The upcoming series will reportedly include an emotional return to her childhood home in New Jersey. While specific details about the show's main focus remain undisclosed, the filming in New Jersey implies that Williams is poised to share aspects of herself in a manner previously unseen by her fans. However, some fans have already speculated it. They are arguing that it is all because of her feud with Diddy. One of HR fans wrote, be somebody get Wendy Williams a MF podcast microphone or something. Not she done Avatar Ang when the world him most he vanished. Another one added, you ever wake up and just miss Wendy Williams? One more fan wrote his sentiments saying, Wendy Williams, we speak your name, rise up and take your place. Fans missing her in hidden words is pointing towards something very suspicious. In the past, Wendy and Diddy were involved in a very long feud that lasted for 20 straight years. As allegations of SA and physical abuse mount against Sean Diddy Combs in multiple lawsuits, fans are expressing a renewed desire for a Wendy Williams comeback. However, history suggests that making a comeback after crossing paths with Diddy can be challenging. Throughout her media career, Wendy Williams, known as the queen of entertainment news and gossip, consistently addressed celebrity rumors and attempted to raise concerns about Combs. The ongoing beef with the music mogul may have even contributed to setbacks in her career. Now, as fans clamor for a Wendy Williams return, the shadow of her past conflicts with Diddy adds an extra layer of complexity to the prospect of her comeback. You know, my thing about when you date a mogul, like he can hire a plane right now. Wendy Williams commenced her career with New York City's Hot 97 radio station in 1994. This period coincided with the rise of the Bad Boy record label, established by Sean Diddy Combs in 1993 through a joint venture with Arista Records, as reported by the BBC. Bad Boy Records became synonymous with renowned talents such as the notorious Big, Lil' Kim, Mace, Faith Evans, and Total, all of whom enjoyed significant airtime on radio stations, including Hot 97, where Wendy Williams was an integral part of the media landscape. Hot 97 launched 
launched around the time that Bad Boy launched. Former Bad Boy president Kirk Burroughs said during an interview with the podcast, The Art of Dialogue in 2022, we came with records that helped the rotation to be fulfilled. During a 2009 episode of the Wendy Williams Experience radio show, Wendy Williams shared a recollection from her time at Hot 97, in which she claimed that Sean Diddy Combs had allegedly instructed members of Total, an all-female R&B trio associated with his Bad Boy record label, to confront her. She recounted the incident, stating, I got off the air one day, them Total B were downstairs, and everybody upstairs at the radio station was looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. Williams explained that her boyfriend at the time intervened and prevented the situation from escalating further. Regarding this situation, one person on the internet suggested, Wendy Williams been exposing Puff and others regarding their foul play when she was on the radio, he even tried to get Total before they blew up to jump her. In the 2022 interview, Burroughs delved into the 1990s East Coast-West Coast feud involving Bad Boy and Death Row Records, highlighting Williams' role. According to Burroughs, Combs' infant son and the child's mother, Misa Hilton, allegedly received payment to pose for a picture with Combs' rival, Sue Gay Knight. That she was there in the office and that Shook was meeting Justin Combs and possibly holding him in his arms and that there was a photographer taking a picture. Word circulated to the East Coast that Misa was present in the office where Suge was meeting Justin Combs, and there were rumors of a photograph being taken. Burroughs expressed that the depicted scenario wasn't the image they wanted to project, prompting urgent intervention by the Bad Boys team to prevent the photo from reaching the public. And that wasn't the picture that we needed to see on our end or that we wanted the world to see at all. Surprisingly, Williams caught wind of the photo and teased a major announcement on her syndicated radio show, leading to the Bad Boys team taking swift action to prevent its dissemination. Subsequently, Williams developed a theory suggesting that Combs had engaged in intimate relations with other men. In 1998, during her time as a radio personality, Wendy Williams suggested on air that Diddy might be gay. Allegedly, upon hearing the news, Diddy took steps to have her fired, sparking a feud that endured for two decades afternoon show that might have been even syndicated then that she had big news coming that involved Justin Dior Combs. The situation reportedly escalated to the extent that Diddy sent a girl group from his label to confront Williams. She recounted the incident, stating, Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group to beat my A in front of the radio station. Williams continued, describing the aftermath. I finish my shift, round up my headphones to see everyone lined up on the side of the window, looking down at the sidewalk. Upon reaching the ground floor, she claimed to witness this girl group jump out of a gypsy cab to kick her A. If the rumor mill is correct, Correct, that girl group was Total, once signed to Bad Boy Records, and the music mogul was Diddy. She claimed to have received a photo depicting a man purportedly pulling down Combs' shorts while he was vacationing in Cancun. In a 2022 Art of Dialogue interview, Combs' former bodyguard Jean Deal asserted that Combs orchestrated Williams' dismissal from her position at Hot 97 before she could discuss the photo on air. The power Combs had with the radio stations in New York didn't breathe hard if Combs didn't want them to. Combs got one of the hottest DJs off Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down, Deal said. Combs told Hot 97 if they didn't get rid of her before he got back in New York, that they was not going to get any music from any of his friends, any of the record label's executives that was cool with him, everyone was going to boycott their station. We was out in LA for about three days, Deal added. Before we landed back in New York, Wendy Williams was in the radio station in Philly. It was over for her. She was fired. In a 2013 interview with Vlad TV, Williams reflected on her departure from the New York City radio scene, linking it to discussions about homophobia in hip hop. She stated, There was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams, and she was practically burned at the stake for talking about such. Now, it's all come full circle. There were many situations back in my career, and it's all coming full circle. This remark highlighted the challenges and backlash she faced for addressing certain topics during her career. According to a report by Wrap Up, Wendy Williams admitted to harboring lingering resentment towards Diddy due to her perception that he attempted to sabotage her career. In her book, The Wendy Williams Experience, she wrote, The hell he put me through I will never forget, but I don't hate him. In 2017, Diddy appeared on Williams' show to publicly end their two-decade feud. Williams had expressed a hope for such a reconciliation, though she considered it unlikely. As the interview began, Williams acknowledged her past actions, stating, I know 
know I've pissed a lot of people off, including you, but this is a full circle moment. Diddy appeared to accept the olive branch, engaging in a conversation with Williams about personal matters, including his then-girlfriend Cassie, expressing, I'm in love now. In light of recent revelations, a notable moment occurred when Williams speculated on her televised talk show in 2015 about Combs possibly displaying controlling behavior during a temporary split with his then-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. I was asked during our morning meeting, do I think that she wasted 11 years? I, I said, well, in a lot of ways, yeah, because, you know, when, when you're in your 20s, like... Expressing her views, Williams conveyed the challenges of avoiding a mogul when in a relationship with one, emphasizing the unpredictability of their appearances. She shared concerns about the potential for a mogul to make unexpected appearances, citing scenarios like hiring a plane to land on the roof of a hotel, paying off front desk staff, and obtaining access to a partner's room. Williams expressed apprehension about such actions, highlighting the complexities of navigating relationships with influential individuals. Puffy introduced her to a world that she would never know. Because I still, for the life of me, and I, I like you, Cassie, and hi, Puff, but I still don't know what Cassie does except for walk around and look pretty. In November, Ventura initiated legal action against Combs by filing a lawsuit, alleging R, physical A, and emotional mistreatment. Ventura, who was under contract with Bad Boy, claimed that Combs had drugged her for the purpose of engaging in S activities with him and other individuals, including S workers. She further detailed the tumultuous nature of their 11-year relationship, highlighting instances of severe V. She alleges that, you know, Diddy, he'll make her look online for BBCs for their freak off sessions. And she say that, you know, in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he enjoyed. Remarkably, just one day after Ventura filed the lawsuit, Combs and his legal representatives reached an undisclosed settlement with her. After being in a relationship with Combs for more than a decade, Cassie made some serious allegations, citing multiple incidents of A, including violent beatings and H, throughout their time together. The New York Times first brought these distressing accusations to light, detailing a disturbing narrative of Combs, exerting control control over every facet of Cassie's life. The lawsuit portrays a bleak pattern of A, violence, and SH that endured until the relationship ultimately ended in 2018. She said in a statement to the Times that after years in silence and darkness, she was finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and A in their relationships. A representative for Combs, who goes by multiple monikers such as Puff Daddy, P Diddy, Diddy, and Love, of, strongly denied the allegations, labeling them as offensive and outrageous. The spokesperson insisted that these accusations emerged after Ventura allegedly sought a purported $30 million settlement from the mogul. And Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, are saying tonight that the two have settled a lawsuit she filed against the mogul yesterday in Manhattan federal court. The statement further stated, Miss Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. Ventura's legal representative informed the New York Times that she had been offered eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of this lawsuit, an offer she reportedly declined. Additionally, the legal complaint contends that Ventura experienced assault, asserting that she was purportedly pressured into engaging in non-consensual activities in various cities. In 2015, the legal filing claims that Combs subjected Ventura to a brutal beating, resulting in her having two black eyes, a burst and bruised lip, and a huge welt on her forehead, prompting his security guard and assistant to tears upon witnessing her injuries. As per Ventura's accusations, she was allegedly compelled to isolate herself in hotels until her bruises healed consistently. It says that not long after she met him in 2005, when she was only 19 years old, he began a pattern of control use that included. Under Diddy's initial guidance, Cassie rose to stardom with the launch of her self-titled debut album in 2006. The album included the hit single Me and You, highlighting Cassie's undeniable talent and allure. However, the music industry landscape was not without its share of challenges and controversies. I'd rather lose a lover than to love a loser. So I'd rather lose like the love of my life than to love a guy that's just whack. And I think um, the experience. Criticism of Cassie's career under Diddy often revolved around the perception that she was sometimes treated more as a fashion accessory or arm candy for the music mogul, overshadowing her identity as a singer and artist. 
Despite her undeniable potential to make a mark in the music industry independently, the spotlight on her personal life frequently overshadowed her musical endeavors. And these twists went to her case too. It is believed that Diddy has used his influence and power to pressurize Cassie to settle the suit. This is evident from his famous powerful legal team too. One of his lawyers is John Houston, who is known for his unparalleled skills in law. John Houston has earned accolades as the best lawyer of his generation, with a commanding reputation for his trial advocacy according to Chambers. Recognized as one of the top trial attorneys in the country, Houston has been honored as a National Trials MVP in 2022, a Lawyer of the Decade from 2010 to 2020, and twice as a California Lawyer of the Year. His achievements include the successful recovery of $5.15 billion after trial. John Houston is a former lead prosecutor for the Enron trial of Ken Lay and Jeffrey Skilling. He is now a partner and co-chair of the Corporate Crisis and White Collar Defense Practice. Having previously served as the lead prosecutor in the Enron trial of Kenneth Lay and Jeffrey Skilling, Houston is widely acknowledged for his expertise in handling sensitive white collar matters and investigations. Benchmark litigation highlights his focus not only on winning cases, but also on preventing reputational damage, emphasizing his skill in managing discrete, low-profile matters, issues that clients prefer to keep out of the public eye. It is reasonable to argue that John alone could exert sufficient pressure on Cassie to prompt a settlement in such a serious case, ultimately leading to a successful escape for John. However, despite the resolution of the lawsuit, Diddy's legal challenges appear to persist. And now in Wendy's case, people have the same speculations. As Wendy is known for throwing for on Diddy, he might have used his influence wrongly and fired her. Two years later, Williams and Combs experienced a reconciliatory moment, marked by a surprising turn of events when the record label owner made a guest appearance on Williams' show. I know I pissed a lot of people off, including you, but this is a full circle moment, Williams candidly expressed to Combs, revealing that she hadn't seen him in 15 years. Acknowledging his nervousness about appearing on the show, Combs commended Williams for being one of the pioneering hip-hop journalists. In an unusual departure from her typical style, Williams asked Combs a series of softball questions, focusing primarily on his children and charity work. The conversation then shifted to Combs promoting his latest project at the time, an upcoming documentary detailing the history of Bad Boy Records. As African-American men and women, we needed to have a story that had a good ending, a success story, he told Williams. However, during another one of Combs' intermittent relationships with Ventura, Williams openly discussed the breakup on air in 2018. She asserted that Ventura had invested her time in a man 17 years her senior, suggesting that it was a waste. About a week after the announcement of the split, Combs took to social media in an attempt to reconcile with Ventura. In response to the publicized saga, Williams offered her perspective, cautioning against the use of social media for such matters. She remarked, I suggest don't use social media though to reach out. This was a grand overture from Combs. I don't believe he really wants her or wants her back. I believe he probably treated her at some particular point like a possession. If you really care, then you'd reach out privately, not publicly. Following the settlement of Ventura's lawsuit, a series of additional abuse allegations surfaced against Combs. On November 23rd, an accuser asserted that Combs and her when she was a college student at Syracuse University in 1991. The next day, another lawsuit claimed that Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall pressured a woman to consume alcohol before assaulting her. Subsequently, Combs faced an accusation of gang raping a teenager alongside music executive Harve Pierre in 2003. In response to these claims, Combs took to social media to issue a statement this week stating, Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Moreover, during their reconciliatory conversation, Diddy encouraged Wendy Williams to ask him anything, leading to a candid discussion. Diddy opened up about the painful experience of losing his friend Christopher Notorious Big, Wallace. He expressed a sense of responsibility, revealing, I always feel some sort of responsibility because I'm in this thing with him. He was supposed to go to London that night and I let him talk me into not going to London and staying in LA. That's something that bothered me throughout my life. Diddy went on to confess, Sometimes you have to really go with the decision in your gut. He shared his regret, stating, that's one of the things I regret, not making sure that he went to London. This personal revelation added a deeper and more poignant dimension to their conversation, 
Wendy again joined the scene when Aubrey O'Day also talked about Diddy. In one of the episodes of her show, Wendy Williams discussed the controversy surrounding former Danity Kane member Aubrey O'Day and her claims against Diddy. Williams began by complimenting Aubrey, referring to her as the Beyonce of Danity Kane, but the tone quickly changed. Wendy addressed Aubrey directly, stating, Aubrey, you know I like you, but I'm calling it like I see it. You're more successful at reality TV than you are with music. I don't know one Aubrey or Danity Kane song, and that's real. Do do you? Clap if you do. Only a few audience members responded before Williams listed the reality television shows in which Aubrey has been cast. Continuing her commentary, Williams said, So, she's good at that, but maybe not so much with the singing. Listen, Aubrey, sour grapes. He might not have finished with Danity Kane, but maybe that's because you all thought you were bigger than you really were, and you weren't listening to the master. Williams emphasized Diddy's influence by mentioning artists like Lil' Kim, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, Biggie Smalls, Janelle Monet, French Mon Montana and Machine Gun Kelly, suggesting that Aubrey should reconsider her perspective. Williams concluded with a straightforward message saying, Get your facts. Aubrey caught wind of Williams's words and made the talk show host an offer. Ma, you got so much to say when I'm not sitting in front of you. Why don't you be a real one and run your mouth like this face to face? I dare you. I'll clear my F calendar. When the Wendy Williams show returned for its 13th season in 2022, there was a noticeable absence of its eponymous host, Wendy Williams. This sparked rumors about her personal life, with speculation about potential health issues or struggles with addiction. In Wendy's absence, an array of guest hosts including Leah Remini, Fat Joe, Michael Rappaport, and Remy Ma stepped in to fill the hosting role. The public's attention and speculation increased during this period, and various accusations and rumors began circulating, including those involving Diddy. Producers announced that Sherry Shepard would replace Wendy Williams, leading to a statement from Williams' spokesperson. He acknowledged the reality of syndicated television, stating, You can't go to the marketplace and sell a show that's the Maybe Wendy show. Sherry Shepard, known for her acting, one-time co-hosting role on The View, and skepticism about evolution, emerged as one of the more popular fill-in hosts. Described as a safe choice fitting into the current trend of celebrity talk shows, Shepard aligns with the era where former actors and singers transition into the talk show format. I have some big news for you. Starting in September, I am debuting my own talk show, Sherry! The landscape of celebrity-hosted talk shows has shifted from Wendy Williams' style, from Kelly Clarkson, who brought back the singer-hosted Variety Hour, to the upbeat vibe of the Drew Barrymore show, the current successful shows differ from Williams's mold. Despite this, the end of the Wendy Williams show emphasizes the uniqueness of her style, which played a pivotal role in redefining the daytime talk format when the show debuted in 2008. Wendy Williams rose to fame as an old-school radio personality, distinguishing herself not just as an interviewer, but as a broadcasting entertainer. Beginning her career in New York and Philadelphia radio, she delved into hip-hop culture and celebrity discussions with a messy and trans transgressive style of sharing gossip and personal revelations. Hello, I Mr. Cameraman. So. <laughs> We're being filmed. Hi. You know, some things, uh, a, national, a national organization films DJs and shows that I guess what's other DJs. The gossip culture of the 90s and 2000s has faced criticism for perpetuating anti-queer and anti-black sentiments, and Williams was not exempt from controversy. She engaged in problematic actions such as outing figures like DeBrat and speculating about Puff Daddy. Her gay-coded catchphrase, how you doin', became a trademark that according to much evidence was indirectly related to Diddy. Dim your eyes and you're gonna spread your bottom lips on the door. Almost so your mouth is in the shape of a triangle. How you doin'? By the time the Wendy Williams show debuted in the summer of 2008, Williams had become a widely recognized figure, even among those who didn't listen to her on the radio. However, transitioning her brand to daytime TV presented challenges, as this medium typically calls for less shade and more family-friendly celebrity interactions. In one of the early episodes of the Wendy Williams show, Omarosa Manigol Newman, known for her confrontational style, attempted to provoke Williams with jabs about her wig and insinuations that the host had softened. Omarosa suggested, maybe they're backing you up for the show, to which Williams responded, no, this is the same Wendy, sweetie. Wendy Williams emerged on television at the opportune moment, becoming the perfect shady ringmaster for the evolving era of feud-centric social media and reality TV. She uniquely navigated in-depth discussions, such as revisiting Aretha Franklin's life, alongside on-air conflicts with reality TV personalities like Jocelyn Hernandez from Love & Hip Hop. I should feel wanted by people like you. Not just me, all the other young girls. You are, you are wanted by me. I always say that you're very entertaining. <laughs> yeah, we, 
And but we feel seated in a throne-like purple chair, sipping her tea, Williams delivered her hot takes on TV shows, social media controversies, and music, always seeking reactions. Whether declaring Beyonce inarticulate, expressing concerns about Tabitha Brown's marriage, or discussing Diddy's relationships, Williams fearlessly courted the attention of the Bayhive and triggered viral clapbacks. Her willingness to stir the pot and spark discussions became a defining element of her show. Unfortunately, she fell victim to Diddy's brutality and was forced forced to vacate her own residence. Nevertheless, fans can take comfort in knowing that she is now secure in her new home, having successfully escaped Diddy's violent actions. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.